Um, hi, everyone. This is my talk on replacing extensions. Um, about me, I live in New Jersey for a long time. I lived in New York, but we moved uh, last year. Um, I'm, I'm the um, author or co-author of about 20 MediaWiki extensions. The number keeps growing, but, but um, I'm the, my, my most important one is the first one I created, which is called PageForms. Um, I'm also the founder of WikiWorks, which has existed since 2009. That's a MediaWiki consulting company. Um, and I, I wrote a book uh, called Working with MediaWiki. Oh, there it is. Peter's holding it up. Uh, um, which is the only, it's the only MediaWiki book that's been published, as far as I know, since 2010. Uh, and it came out in 2012, and I've, I've updated it a few times since then. Um, and uh, I now work at a company called Genesis since 2017. Uh, there have been people from Genesis at previous conferences. They use MediaWiki, uh, uh, and they're you know trying to spread it further within the company. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm still at WikiWorks, but I'm, but I'm not, uh, I'm not doing day-to-day uh, -day stuff in there anymore. Um, uh -oh. Okay, we're heading right, okay, let's jump right into it. Uh, I want to talk about, uh, you know, replacing extensions, wh when it makes sense to uh, create alternatives for extensions, when it's happened before, and, and that whole idea. So, so, um, but the, the first case study is, uh, is an extension called flag revs, uh, which allows for um, displaying a revision other than the latest one to users. And on Wikipedia, it's known as pending changes. Um, it's, uh, it's very complicated. It has a lot of what I, would, what I think are unnecessary features. Uh, there's actually a, a way to, to um, review for each revision on different scales of quality, uh, whether, uh, you know, how good it is, and then you can have a consensus to decide what should be the revision that's shown to users. Um, uh, approved revs, I, I created this extension. It's the first extension I created that was, that duplicated another extension that was, you know, wasn't really doing anything new. Um, uh, it's, in theory, it's very simple. Uh, you know, there's just one approved revision per page, uh, or at most. Um, whoever's an administrator can change that and set a different one to be the approved one. Uh, it's, it's somewhat complicated, and it gets more complicated uh, with, as new features get added, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to complete, keep the complexity manageable, uh, and, uh, and flag revs sort of serves as a, as a, a you know, a, a a warning beacon or something, I guess, to, to uh, you know, to, to make sure it doesn't get too complex. Uh, and you can see it at that uh, at that URL. Um, this might be the closest. I, I don't know. I don't know how many people actually still use flag drives. This might be the closest one of my examples to a true replacement. Uh, in that flag rev seems to have just fallen off the radar. I know some people are still using it, but uh, but. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it was supposed to be heavily used on Wikipedia and it's, it's sort of, um, it's sort of dropped off. Um, uh, Nuke is an interesting one. I'm not, I think a lot of people still use it. Uh, is, who here, does anybody here use Nuke? Okay, one, if, okay, a few people. Yeah, okay. Um, it lets you delete a large group of pages, um, and the way you do it is just say this user or this IP address is clearly a vandal. So if they just created 200 pages, then you know delete all of them uh, with, by clicking on one button. Um, I don't think it's that helpful. People may disagree. Um, in my experience, spam maybe that's maybe it's changed in the last five years, but it seems to be that. Uh, once spammers know about your wiki, they're going to hit it with a lot of different newly created user accounts. It's like create account, spam, create a new account, spam, et cetera, you know, every five seconds or something. Um, and the same goes for, you know, they, they cycle through IP addresses also, maybe just to get around protections like Nuke. Um, 
so I, I don't think it's that helpful. And you can see actually on the new talk page, page some people say, you know, I accidentally entered the username of, you know, an actual user in Nuke. How do I get back the, you know, 500 pages I just deleted? Um, Smite Spam is an extension I, I oversaw during a Google Summer of Code project, I think two years ago, or I think two years ago, two and a half years ago. Um, it, uh, it doesn't go by um, IP address or username, although you can put those in a whitelist saying, you know, don't, don't look at these. Uh, uh, but basically, it just looks at the text of pages. I mean, one thing that's common to a ton of MediaWiki spam is it doesn't actually use wiki text, or very little, just enough to put in a link or something. Uh, but there's no, you know, section headers, internal links, anything else. Uh, um, so it's not, you know, it, it doesn't do neural networks or any fancy AI stuff, but even the, the, the simple algorithms it uses tend to be pretty good at identifying spam uh, if you've just been hit by a lot of it. Um, I don't know how much this gets used, but personally, I think it's a much better option than, than Nuke uh, or, or, or that kind of approach. Uh, so yeah, if you're interested in, this is really just a plug for Smite Spam, but uh, if you're interested in it, you can uh, get it at that uh, URL. Um, Semantic MediaWiki. Okay, you, this is probably, this is gonna be my most controversial slide, I'm sure more than even the one where I needlessly slagged UML yesterday. Um, uh, so what does it do? Uh, you, you guys all know this, but it, it's, it's, uh, it's used for storage, querying, browsing, and visualization of data in the wiki. Um, it's a good extension, and I really don't want to say too much about this. I'm sort of including it here just for completeness. Uh, I Personally, this is just my personal opinion, think it's, it's uh, a little overly complicated to, uh, to install and set up data structures uh, and query because you have to learn a, a whole custom query language. And uh, if we have time at the end, maybe there's, this is worth discussing, maybe not, I don't know. Um, the alternative is Cargo, an extension I, I, I was the original author for and I'm still the main developer. Uh, it's one extension instead of up to 15 if you really use all the, the Semantic Media Wiki family. Um, the big advantage is that it uses standard database tables instead of uh, providing its own custom storage system. Uh, so that just makes a, a lot of things easier in the process, less code and less uh, uh, you know, less custom storage and querying uh, happening, and, uh, and there's the URL for it. Um, PonyDocs, this is really an, another kind of trivial one, because I'm almost sure no one uh, here has used it uh, or heard of it, uh, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's used to, uh, it's, it's interesting in concept uh, to, to let you document software and hardware. Um, so if you have a, a lot of pages about different products and different versions and so forth, then you can create a hierarchy of those. And of course, if you're already using SMW or Cargo and page forms, then you, know, you can just have a, a structure um, uh, just using those. But it does a few nice things, and I wish I had included a screenshot uh, uh, like linking to the, to the same documentation for different versions, uh, that kind of thing. It's all stuff that can be done probably uh, in a custom way, uh, but it, it, it is convenient in some ways. Um, I also include some access control for, for, you know, for different products, that kind of thing. Uh, it's, it's poorly implemented. I'm sorry if, uh, if any PonyDocs developers are, are watching this at any point. Um, the people who did it clearly, that's the, that's the one MediaWiki extension they ever created. Um, it is used, the reason I know about it and I mention it is because it's used at my company, Genesis, uh, but we're trying to move away from it. So I'm, I, I've created a, a, a competitor docs extension, which doesn't have a name yet, um, but uh, hopefully that'll get released sometime 
this year uh, and, and start to get used to replace pony ducks. Um, collection, this one is interesting. Uh, I don't know if anyone here uses it. It's, um, it lets you create PDF files uh, out of multiple wiki pages and it, it, was, um, it was developed uh, by a company called Pedia Press, I think, who, who um, uh, they, they, they make you know, books like travel guides and so forth that are basically just a collection of uh, Wikipedia articles on that subject all put together. Um, and for a long time, it's, it was the only PDF solution as far as, you know, if you want to, uh, ma to you know, make a book or whatever else, and uh, that, that was pretty much it. It's hard to set up. I, I don't know if anyone here has tried using it. Yeah, okay. Would you, okay. Would you agree that it's not ideal? That it's hard to set up? Okay. Yeah, and it, yeah, and it has dependencies and so forth. Um, uh, there is an alternative uh, just released last month, and I know about it because it, uh, it was developed uh, uh, by Wikiworks um, uh, for, for NATO, actually. Um, they, had, uh, they, they needed, the, the impetus for it was that they, need, they needed formatting that, uh, that collection doesn't provide, which, which is not hard to do because collection doesn't really provide any formatting. Um, uh, so it's called docbook export and not PDF export because it, uh, it saves it into docbook format, which is a standard format used for, uh, for books and documents. Um, it's, uh, I, I'm, I'm more familiar with, the, this, the, with a format called LaTeX, but uh, docbook is simpler and, and I guess more, more popular for, for books and stuff like that. Um, so what it does is it, it uh, takes the HTML from a page, it lets the MediaWiki parser do the wiki text to HTML, then it uses this thing called Pandoc to turn that into docbook and then turns into PDF. Um, uh, and what that means is that it, 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 uh, it, it's, it lets it, that process makes, it allows it to do a lot of uh, customization. Um, you can set, you can do indexing and, cl and include figures and of course you have the, the a whole, um, uh, a lot of styling options, fonts, and everything else. Um, and uh, it, I think it's pretty easy to install. I mean, you need to, to set up Pandoc and these other utilities that are used for these different steps, but it's, um, it seems to be, I mean, I got it working, and I, I still haven't been able to get Visual Editor installed, so for what it's worth. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry, question. Yeah, I, maybe I should have uh, shown an example. Basically, there's just a parser function called, uh, I think it's called docbook, where you just, you just specify these are all the wiki pages I want in this order, and then you specify some other th stuff like use this to create the index and, uh, and uh, you, you know, th that kind of thing. Oh, oh, I've just been locked out of your laptop, Brian, sorry. So anyway, so it's just a parser function, so you can just keep adding to it, and actually every time somebody goes to get the PDF, at the moment anyway, it newly generates the PDF, so there's never a, a concern about caching or anything. Um, there probably should be some caching, but anyway, uh, yeah, it's easy to, to change. It's easier than also th to do that than with collection where you have to, there's a whole structure you have to create of books, you know, define a book and so forth. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's done outside of the wiki. Um, I'm, I'm new to all of this stuff, uh, but, so I, I might not be a totally right, but DocBook uses uh, something called XSL style sheets, which is sort of like CSS, but for DocBook instead of for HTML. So, you, so it comes with some built-in XSL, but you can go into the server and, and put in your own style sheets, XSL style sheets instead, and then it'll just work as far as I know. Uh, yeah. Oh, I should. I, oh, with collection? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot. That's another big advantage of, I should have just made my talk about this. Uh, <laughs> um, 
Um, yeah, as far as I know, uh, collection uses the wiki text in order to create the PDFs, which means parser functions in general won't work, and that's especially true with, with uh, queries, SMW queries. If you want to show a table or a map or something, it just, it just won't, I don't know exactly what it does. It just won't show it, it just shows the, it just, yeah, it just prints the wiki text. Um, yeah, that's another huge advantage of DocBook export because it, it takes the HTML of the wiki page uh, instead of the wiki text, then you know, so, uh, you know, what you see is what you get. That's, the, you know, that's what you get the output. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Mark. Um, how does this compare with what Wikimedia is working on with the like, front stack? Never heard of it. I don't know. It's a, Oh, okay. Well, great. Yeah. If, if uh, yeah. Okay. If, if there's going to be a. If anybody didn't hear that question, there's, there's a, new, a new extension coming called the Electron Stack. Is that an extension or what? Elect okay. Okay. Oh, Electron. It's under development. Okay. Oh, I see. Electron is some third-party yeah. thing. It's, okay. Uh, like Chrome. Headless Chrome is basically what that is. It's basically a rendered web browser that gets cranked with the PDF. I see. Um, because users can't do that themselves. <laughs> uh, but can it take multiple wiki pages? That's, that's the part they're working on. I see. Okay. Then, then, what, sorry. So would this doc fall into the new whatever you've done? Oh, oh, is this better than the Electron thing? I don't know. Well, I guess we'll have to see it. Um, uh, I can, uh, I, I'm just looking at what you say about, you know, you're using a, a what do you call that? Parser function? Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Books. That's right. I'm guessing that they have something more like collection did, which was a special right. page. Um, so that, you know, the UI there is a little better. Uh, yeah, there's advantages and disadvantages to, to doing that. The advantage with a, par a parser function is that anyone can change it and, you know, it's not admin only, um, uh, that kind of thing. Um, and it's easier to make modif to modify the extension, but that, that it's not relevant. So, um, Okay, visual editor. Uh, speaking of visual editor, I just mentioned this. Uh, WYSIWYG, it does WYSIWYG editing of uh, wiki pages, and it's been discussed here before. It, we're, it works great. I, I can't, uh, you know, some people say it's, it's slow. It can be slow. It seems, it seems to, the, the speed seems to be a function of like the, the square of the, of the size of the page or something. It's like it gets exponentially slower as the page gets bigger, as far as I can tell. Um, uh, so uh, it's, uh, but the, the, the main problem I see with it is just, it's just that it's hard to install. And again, I've never been able to, to install it. Um, and it, it requires parsoid. I don't, that's misspelled. Um, uh, and, um, um, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. And, and it doesn't work with page forms, although that uh, is going to change in the next few months, uh, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but, uh, but still, that installation is a real problem, in my opinion. Um, so this is very new. This just came out a week ago, although, um, although it's been in, in the works for, for a long time, for over a year. Um, mostly, mostly developed by, by uh, another guy, I don't know if I should mention his name, although it's there on the, uh, the wiki page, a guy named uh, Duncan Crane in, uh, in England, um, whom I've been in close contact with. Um, and um, uh, so I've, I helped out um, to some extent. Um, it's, not, it's not a replacement in that it will never be as good uh, at editing wiki pages um, with all the edge cases and so forth as visual editor, but it's, it's just, uh, it's, it, 
incredibly easy to install compared to a visual editor. It's it's just an ex just JavaScript. You just install it and and it's work and it works. Um, uh, and it works, oh, the slide doesn't actually say that, but it does work in page forms um, already. Um, and there's the URL, and here's a little, um, here's a little screenshot of, you know, of the output, which is basically exactly what you'd expect from, uh, from a WYSIWYG editor. That's it, yeah, go ahead. I don't know actually what would happen if you tried using them together. Each one of them creates a new tab. Uh, so in theory, you could have you know three editing tabs for a single page. This works yeah, with page forms, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So, I, I, so could that's, you restrict this to the page forms? Uh, yes, you can do that. Can you do that? Because that seems like it would. Well, the, w the way it works is um, pages that are form editable um, uh, will just have the edit with form tab. And, and there, within the form, you can specify for each text area, I, I, I want tiny MCE here, et cetera. Pages that are not form editable will get the separate tiny MCE editing tab. So, but could you turn that one off and leave the page forms on? And what I'm saying is, if it's if a page is form editable, you won't see that tab. So it's it's always off. No, he's saying the one that does not have a page form, he will turn that tab off. Oh, turn the oh, I see. Uh, pages that aren't form editable. I I'm not sure actually. I see. I see what you're saying. Uh, I'm not sure, but it should be easy to add that yeah. setting um, if it's not there. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That is an option. Um, uh, although if you already have Visual Editor installed, then if and when Visual Editor support comes in for page forms, then you might as well use it for everything, sure, I think. Sure, but I'm looking for a quick fix. Okay, well, all right. Um, all right, here's, a, here's an interesting one. Uh, I think this is my last one. Um, an extension called Flow until, what, two months ago or something, and then they get they they decided to change it to structured discussions. Um, it offers a, a, a structured layout of talk pages. So instead of a talk page, this is the talk page for the, for the main uh, the home page on MediaWiki.org. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, there's tabbing and all that stuff. Uh, and you can see there, I don't know if you can see the search interface, but yeah, there's just a bunch of things, uh, features there. Um, and notice that it's it's a, a relatively small column inside the overall page, and and there's a big sidebar that's reserved for just you know uh, description and all and stuff like that. Um, you can also have the full page for just the breadth and no sidebar. Oh, okay. I think personally, it's as clunky as its new name. I don't know if, if uh, there's anyone here who's involved in the name change, but that's, that's just horrible. I mean, I, I can't imagine anyone saying structured discussions over and over when talking about this extension. Flow was awful enough. I like Flow. I think Flow is no, a great. It was awful enough. How do you? Oh, I see. Flow, not enough. Flow in quotes. Not the name, but the thing. <laughs> I'm just like, Flow, how does that convey talk? I don't know. I, 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 okay. I like the name. It grew on me. Yeah. yeah. No. No. Um, no. Yeah. I liked uh, Echo and Flow sort of came together. I, I don't know. I like the whole uh, the sound of it. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe it, it sounds better to me now after here after uh, seeing the, the the alternative. Um. Um. Yeah. I mean. It, I, it's very hard, I'm certainly not the only person who's said this, it's very hard to follow long discussions on it uh, because it's, it's um, you, in large part because it, it has big fonts, lots of white space, and it has this thing, infinite scrolling, which I was never a fan of, even though it's become really popular on the web. Um, uh, it, um, 
Yeah, and they, they, the, the, there's a plan to implement it on Wikipedia, and there's a big user revolt, and that's not something new, but um, <laughs> with new extensions. But um, uh, anyway, if, if other people have different opinions on flow structured discussions, I'd be, I'd, I'd be glad to hear them. This is just my personal opinion, again. Um, I yeah. like its integration with that. I like the way the, the, the support desk works. Yeah. Yeah, so any, yeah, yeah. Extensions I that integrate with Echo are great. Scrolling all that, you know, I, don't, I don't really address, come at it that way. I, I come at it through the, uh, the notifications. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Notifications are great. Um, it would be good if more extensions integrated with Echo. Um, yeah, it just infinite scrolling just makes it. I think it's hard. It makes it hard to find anything that was, you know, that's, that's, a year ago or something. Right, right, right. Um, so uh, this is the this this is the one use case that I, I wasn't involved in uh, in uh, developing in any way. But there's a there's a uh, an extension uh, developed at Mitre. Uh, called comment streams, uh, which I, I think is better. It's uh, it's more configurable. It's uh, and it's, it's less intrusive. Um, uh, yeah, it works more like the the Facebook style comments that you see at the bottom of pages, um, sometimes uh, of wiki pages sometimes, uh, and you can in fact include it at the bottom of pages, not just in the talk page. Uh, and there's the URL for it. Do you want? Sorry. And it's integrated with Echo. Okay. Um, but uh, soon visual editor, sorry. Soon visual editor. And soon visual. Oh, and soon comment streams will be integrated with visual editor. Yeah, and there. And uh, yeah, stick around for Friday afternoon if you want to see something more about that. Um, so yeah, I mean, these are just disparate examples. I've I'm, I've tried to find you know a thesis behind this whole thing. Um, the question is for anyone who 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 um, is thinking about creating an extension or or hiring someone or telling someone asking their employees to create an extension or something. The, um, the question is when is creating an alternative justified? When when uh, when should you bother if there already is an extension that nominally does what you what you want it uh, to do? Um, Often it's when the, the current solution is too complicated. Um, uh, so, so yeah, for th well, for three of these seven cases, uh, uh, the, the alternative extension does less, not more. And often I think that's the way to go is simplifying things uh, versus, adding, versus you know, adding more features. Um, four of these are maintained by the Wikimedia Foundation for what it's worth. Um, um, that may just be m more a function that the, their extensions are always, you know, the standard to uh, to, to, to go by. Um, let's see. Are there any other? This is sort of a, an open question. Are there other candidates for replacement? And and actually thinking about this made me think about flow again. Um, uh, besides, this, this should really be another possible alternative to flow slash structured discussion slash comment streams. Uh, and this is really just an open question, just, just something I've been thinking about. Um, you know, the, a lot of the point of these is that it's just hard for users to learn the syntax. Uh, you know, you have to figure out how to ident indent it to exactly the right number of spots, and then you have to put in the, the four tildes to make your signature. Um, so this is just a random mock-up I put together. This is from a, the Wikipedia talk page on Houston. And, I, and the idea is you just have a little bit of JavaScript. Uh, it says, you can't even read that. It says, uh, add reply here. Uh, you just a little bit of JavaScript that puts in arrows. Uh, it, you know, and so you can click on any of those, and it would pop up a window that, that just you know, lets you put in your wiki text and it'll, it'll take care of the signature and the indenting and everything. Just signature and indenting, I guess. Um, and it might you know, validate your wiki text. Um, 
So yeah, it's a uh, you know it's just something to think about. I don't know if anyone has any thoughts on that. Of course, there is uh, there's there's always a need for it to have a true commenting system, uh, but this could potentially be a, a, a lightweight approach to that same thing, especially if you already have a lot of content in talk pages and you just want to make things easier for your users. Um, and is that it? Yeah, I think so. That's it. Any, uh, any questions, comments about, uh, I guess, PDF export was, was the big issue, but anything? Yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah, microphones. Uh, Johan, thanks for that. Um, in terms of Semantic Media Wiki and the forms and the cargo, Yeah. I mean, is there a way of combining the both of them rather than these sort of two separate extensions? Is there, it just seems, it seems a shame that we've got the, they're not competing, but it seems a shame we've got these two extensions that seem to be sort of doing some of the same job for each other. Yeah, um, uh, if the, the yeah, the question is, is just, you know, semantic and media week and cargo, can they just be friends or something? I mean, um, uh, there are, what I would say is, is uh, uh, there are cases of people using the two of them together, and you certainly can use the, the two, not together, but on the same wiki, uh, and people have done that. Um, they, they can't really work together. They each have their own storage system, and they can't, read each other's data, so that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, but certainly Cargo, I mean, yeah, I mean, Cargo is basically just the, the, the look and feel of it was pretty much stolen from Semantic Media Wiki. I mean, I just, uh, just copied all of that, so, so, it's, so it's, it's not, I don't see it as, I don't know where that's going really, but it's not, I'm not trying to rein, I reinvent the wheel. I guess I did reinvent that. I don't know. It's another thing. Um, okay. I guess all. I guess all the main questions were about PDF export. Yeah. I agree with you about uh, flow in terms of a lightweight JavaScript thing with like reply buttons to hide the syntax sugar over the indentation thing, basically. Sounds like a great idea to me. I've kind of thought of similar things at times too. Like, it just seems like a very nice in between of old talk pages versus full on flow or liquid threads or whatever. I don't know. People should make it. Cool. That's, yeah, that's really, uh, that's good to hear. That's interesting. Uh, yeah. So uh, I was wondering about the doc book export. Um, because yeah, I wrote yeah. the HTML to wiki export using Pandoc as well. Um, oh, okay. So uh, I don't know if you know anything about the HTML to wiki extension, but I was curious. Like when I saw, right? When I saw Pandoc and all the formats that it converts, I was thinking yeah. about making an extension that has like a universal format converter and importer. Yeah, and yeah. Pandoc is incredible, and it's it's uh, it seems almost uh, wasteful to just use one little. Part of it. It even actually does wiki text to. It does like ever, anything to anything. Like any of these four things, you can convert to one another using Pandoc, um, as far as I know. Um, uh, yeah. So you think yeah, the, the, yeah, the feasibility yeah, be, is, is there? Right. right? Yeah. Like, yeah. It would be. Like it would Swiss be great Army to see. Of... <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, it's. It, by the way, I didn't really explain it, but it's an open source utility that um, you can just download it. Uh, <laughs> Does it convert from PDF to wiki text? I don't know. I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised. No, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Well, because why? Because if it can go from PDF to something that's just text based, it no, it can do wiki text. I don't know. Maybe someone should look it up. But I can't imagine it would work that well. But that's a that's a whole separate question. Um, probably I don't know. Tables would get lost and all this stuff like that. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. PDF is. Yeah. 
Uh, but yeah, but, but back to that, that question while Cindy gets the microphone. Um, uh, yeah, I think it would be great to have more extensions or maybe a, just a Pandoc extension that really uh, uh, you know, opens uh, all this functionality. Um, we did have an issue once at MITRE where we needed to generate a wiki from a Word document and we had somebody who wrote a bunch of scripts using Pandoc that converted from a Word document to wiki text. So it's theoretically, at least. Uh, yeah, Pandoc okay. gives an example on their page of converting from Pandoc to Lake. So From Pandoc? Yeah. Oh, oh Pandoc. No, from PDF, sorry, from PDF yeah. to Lake. Yeah, okay. So maybe it's we're no, we half of the way there or eighty percent of the way there. So. Right, yeah. Well and then word to wiki text, so there's probably yeah, there's probably some something right. like that. It was Pandoc. Oh, it was Pandoc. Right. It was scripts to invoke Pandoc. Okay. Right. What I'm saying is it was an extension, but there's no reason that if it's possible from scripts that it couldn't be packaged as an extension. Uh, okay. And the cool thing was is that it actually took all of the, the images and uploaded them as files, too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you.